got my guitar, I've got my wine Where we can go, live by the sea Swim in the ocean <laughs> Bit higher this morning, Jess. Not as much as you found, come on. Um, bright as a daisy. Uh-huh. As if... Which way is it up here? So bright you're going the wrong way, pal. So that way. <laughs> Come on, okay. Alright, Rossa, here we are. It's been a bit excited about this. <laughs> I'm going to show this guy some bloody good Shiraz. A bit early for Shiraz? Not for good Barossa Shiraz, Andre. Alright, so we're about to your ex girlfriend. Where do we need to? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the ancestors. I had ancestors who settled here. Alright, so we made it. Yep. Barossa Valley, where are you going to take us, Jess? Yeah, Rusden, uh, Rockford's of tomorrow, mate. Rusden? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, and Yaffy's going to meet us there. Yeah, Toby? Yeah. Wicked? Yeah. Alright, so they have to rely on your directions then. Working hard? Working hard, mate. Good to see you. Yeah. You will? Yeah. Yeah. So you do any hard work, yeah, do you know? <laughs> We're pretty pumped. This is a crack of any. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Yeah. What's the plan today, boys? I think we'll, we'll take you to one of the traditional old school bloody jaunts of the Barossa. What's that? Apex Bakery. Alright, beautiful. Old school. So Apex Bakery has the uh, longest running wood fired oven. Yeah. Southern Hemisphere. Oh, really? Wow. And they still cook all the pies and pastas every morning. We'll go here, crush a bit of fruit. Do you want us to work? Yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> we used to do this in bare feet, but we're not allowed to do that anymore. All right. Meet your best friend for the next half an hour or so. Beautiful. That's called the Predator. It's actually used to have a handle made of a Volksy shocker. Get on there and right. give it a go. This is traditional as it gets. Don't eat them all! <laughs> Is there on the tarot? Yeah. So tell you what, very traditional method of... <laughs> <laughs> can't you just tip the bloody thing in? <laughs> grab a bit of Ooh. You can't get these on the mainland. You'll have to wait till you get the Tassie before you can get these. This is tradition? This is tradition. Every vintage we ship about a half a pallet of this gear over. Do you really? So that's Linky's Medi. Ah. So if you're going to get up and have a bit of a shovel, you need to have a bit of a go at this. Well, no, look, Justin's doing a great job. <laughs> so I've uh, heard that there's a bit of a rivalry that goes on between a couple of butchers here in the Barossa. Yep. Linky's and Schultz's and Steiny's. Linky's have been around for three, gen three generations. They make a good medi, red gum smoke, so it's real strong smoke. Um, Steinies is more of a sandwich medi. This stuff is better for hanging in the shed. Right. And uh, Schultz's, well, we don't really get into the Schultz's, so that's uh, one, to, one to Linkies, uh, one to Steinies, and zero for Schultz's from us. Are you yeah. having fun down there? Yeah, we're doing good. You ready for some wine? I'm ready for beer. Yeah. There's only another 30 <laughs> bins to go. I hope you're sticking around. <laughs> when I worked at Rockford in 97, um, Dad had already been making wine here in the shed, you know, a barrel at a time. 1994 Shiraz uh, was about 16.5% alcohol, probably picked at 17 bone mate. And of course, everyone in the family was used to drinking, you know, 12, 13% alcohol, Cabernets from Eden Valley and wherever. And so everyone in the family that tried this Shiraz at 16% uh, just went, ah, oh, this stuff's horrible, tip it out. So we had about a, a half a pallet down in our cellar and couldn't get rid of it, couldn't give the stuff away until um, I got the job at Rockford and one day I brought a bottle to lunch. About halfway through the bottle, Rob just happened to stumble in and get a glass of it and he's had a bit of a, a bit of a sniff and gone, wow, a bit of a taste and wow, he's just gone, right, everybody empty your glasses, I want everybody to get a glass of this. And so everyone's got a glass of it, and he said, now, if you want to know what Barossa Shiraz tastes like, without oak, without added tannin, without any other tricks, this is it. This is what it smells like. Violets, white pepper. I'm just sitting there, you know, 
19 year old kid going, wow, it's amazing, this guy's my hero. It was such a drinkable wine that we drank about, you know, three quarters of a box that night and everyone ended up crashing in swags at the winery and everyone woke up with a black oh. guts. This is crap. Cheers mate. Cheers. Thanks, for, uh, thanks for putting Justin to work. It's about freaking time. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Mate. We, always, we always say about a good wine, you know, even in the wine tastings and whatever you just go, well, you can't spit this out. Old oak, basket pressing, open ferments. It's really elegant style. I've never tasted a, a Barossa Shiraz anything like this. It doesn't have that like mm. explosion of that really heavy fruit. It's really kind of light and elegant. Well, not light, but it's elegant mm. in style. It's just got a softness. Yeah. How's the uh, Tom Foley rate? Uh, <laughs> when you're thinking, uh, obviously, rather than blackouts, it's aromatic and pretty. Yep, yep. So we wanted to, to source off a bit of a heavier soil, you know, more red dirt, so you get those real, you know, cassis flavours, you yep. know, fruits of the forest. Yep. Um, but we wanted to make it in, in, in an old school manner. Like the old school shoveling dirt yeah. grapes in. <laughs> <laughs> Does that actually make it taste better, the shoveling, or is that a philosophical...? Uh, I, I think that the, the softer you treat your fruit, you're going to get softer, softer wine. From a philosophical sense, in terms of shoveling the grapes, the reason <laughs> I, I reckon, and I've well not reckon, the reason I've promised I will always shovel grapes is because the old growers, and my mum's a fifth generation Barossa grower, which I guess makes me a sixth generation <laughs> Barossa grower. Yeah. Uh, but you go back to your grandpa and, and you listen you know, to his stories and what he believes about the land and that's been passed down to him over the generations is that um, Barossa grape growers don't see themselves as um, owning the land and therefore making you know, a profit or a loss or whatever out of it. They see themselves as custodians of the land, um, that it was a gift to them by the grace of God, and that their job on this planet is to look after it as best as they can, which is why they grow the best grapes around. So if you start getting rid of your shoveling of grapes, then you start getting rid of, you start going, oh, I don't need to have that little crusher on top of the ferment, so I can pump the must. Then you go, oh, I don't need to do that. And you know, so once once the rot sets in, the rot sets right in. Right, right. So it's right. really about ad adhering to that traditional values, right back to the growing sense is where it comes from. At the end of the day, it's farming. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and those old Germans do it the best. Yeah, well. Bottoms, <laughs> bottoms up. Prost. Prost. Just thinking, oh, considering we've had a look at these, these two wines. Yeah. Uh, what do you reckon? Chief? Beautiful by the way. Should we, 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 we put the pressure we, on the get him to pull, pull one out? The jewel oh, of the no. crown? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you worth it? That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but... <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> <is> my resounding <laughs> answer, but what are we talking about? The sand scrub. Yeah, off our oldest vines in the block, so... Are we worth it? <laughs> no. If you want to <laughs> come down the cellar, I've, I've got a little few hidden away down there so we can sneak down there and sounds good to oh, me. Oh no we can't mate we're sorry we're in a rush we go <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good this is what this is all about well, that's alright I'll drink it for lunch myself <laughs> come on this whole fiction stuff here <laughs> you did that makes me really nervous <laughs> <laughs> all right no it's a pleasure to open this wine with your Eva's just ah, having an excuse. Yeah, 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 no, you're not. <laughs> oh, good, boys with a camera. Yeah. We'll do it on camera so I can't <laughs> say no. We don't do it every day, obviously. Mm. But What's it worth? 380 bucks a bottle. Okay. It's four years in New Oak and four years in the barrel. There's no one in Australia doing it. Here's the winery cat. Come on down. He's come for a glass of yeah, Shiraz. Yeah, he's got up there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What a cat. What a cat. What a cat. What a cat. Oh. <laughs> nice save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'll just hold that. Yeah. It's a Roger Reader. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, Jeez, cheers, boys. Cheers. And I'd yeah. uh, just like to say, this is the Barossa. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Shiraz, my friend. <laughs> this is the glory we're talking about.